In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the domain of a composition function. So there are two kind of two things that we have to consider when trying to find the domain of some composition function. So we know that for a composition function, we're taking some function f and evaluating it at another function g of x. Essentially, we're plugging g of x into our function f. So the first thing is if there's some x that makes g undefined, meaning it's not included in the domain of g, then whatever value makes g undefined can't be a value uh, that we use in our composition. Because if g is undefined for some input value, clearly our output would be undefined and we can't evaluate f at some undefined value. So that value has to be excluded from the domain of our composition. Um, secondly, for any value of x that makes g of x uh, some value that's not defined in the function f, that also has to be excluded. So if there are some domain restriction on f, we have to figure out, well, what value um, of x do we have to plug in for g to make it that restriction? And then that x obviously can't be included because that would make our end function uh, undefined. So let's take a look at how we can actually evaluate and find the domain of a given composition function. So we want to find the domain of this function f composed with g of x when we're given that f of x is 3 over x minus 1 and g of x is 2 over x. So first thing we have to consider is what are the domain restrictions on each of our functions individually. So we know that for f of x, the denominator cannot equal 0. So we know that x is not allowed to equal 1. And then same here, x cannot, the denominator can't be 0. So in this case, x cannot equal 0. So because we're composing f with g, we want to know what is f of g of x. So already we know that there's some value that makes g undefined. And that's when x is 0. So because if x is 0, we get an undefined value for g. That means that we get no output that we can put back into f. So x equaling 0 is going to be a domain restriction on our composition. So we know that for our domain, we already know that x cannot equal 0. But we need to figure out, are there any other domain restrictions? Now, we know that our function f uh, is not allowed to equal 1. Now this isn't really x cannot be 1, it's whatever the input is here. So in this case, we're evaluating f at g of x, right? f is being evaluated at g of x, which means really it's 3 over g of x minus 1. So g of x, whatever g of x is, this is not allowed to equal 1. Because if it's 1, 1 minus 1 would give us a 0. So the denominator would be 0 and it would be undefined. So we need to figure out what makes g of x 1 so that we can restrict this value from our domain. So what makes g of x 1? Uh, so let's figure it out. Set 2 over x equal to 1 and figure out what makes that true. So we can multiply both sides by x multiply by x and that's going to give us uh, 2 equals x so x if x is 2 we know that g of x would be 1 which means that x is not allowed to equal 2 because if I plug 2 in I get 2 over uh, 2 which is 1 that means that my output would be 1 and if I plug my output into my function f 1 minus 1 would be 0 so x is not allowed to equal 2 so that is our second domain restriction. And that is our domain here. So the domain of this composition is the set of all x such that x cannot equal 0 and x, sorry, cannot equal 2. If x is either of those values, it will make um, our composition undefined. The first one makes g of x um, undefined, right? And then the second one makes f of g of x undefined. So neither of those can be included in our domain. 